Hi folks, uh, my voice is a little rough today, so I hope I can get through this okay, sorry about that. Um, the title of this video is called The Warning for the Last Days, and we're going to be talking uh, about ecumenism, um, or the uh, ecumenical movement, specifically. Um, the purpose of the video is to discuss the proposed merger between the Catholic Church and the Protestant Church. As I'm sure many of you are aware and have heard, uh, there's a big push lately to blend the two faiths together under one umbrella. Again, this is called ecumenism or the ecumenical movement. Now, in my reality, there's no way that this should be allowed to happen. As I see the Catholic faith is being doctrinally unsound for many reasons though in an effort to keep this video short I will discuss only a couple of reasons um, the first reason being uh, the Catholic doctrine that the Pope is the vector vector of Christ and uh, the vector of Christ are the same as Christ is blasphemy. The Bible clearly states, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's Romans 3.23. And also, uh, there is none righteous, no, not one. That's Romans 3.10. Therefore, no man can be the same as or the vector of Christ. For those still in doubt, please see John 1. As Jesus Christ created the world, and thus he is the creator, and note that man is created, and thus man, or any other created being, will never be on the same level as God, period. So, sorry Pope, sorry Satan, sorry Illuminati, ain't happening, we're not buying it. So, uh, <clears throat> continuing along here. Um, there is praying, then there's the praying to Mary as if she hears the prayers and or is able to mediate between God and man. Again, this is blasphemy. As the word makes it abundantly clear that Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ only is the mediator between God and man. In fact, the false ca ca Catholic doctrine of Mother Mary worship comes from a cult practice of the Queen of Heaven worship. Uh, please research same at your leisure. Uh, if you're really interested, uh, you know, send me a note and I'll do a video on it or something for you if it'll help you. Um, also, the third reason is though there are many, many more reasons that I see the Catholic faith as being a false religion is that they push Sunday worship. This is one of the key things I want to talk about. Um, as you know, Sunday is the first day of the week, and it's not the seventh day. Um, please see Exodus 20, where God said, and I quote, Remember the Sabbath day, and keep it holy. Six days shall thy labor, and do thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath day. Again, the seventh day is the Sabbath day. For the Lord thy God in it, thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, all that is in them, and, the, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath and howled it. The truth is, Sunday worship is pagan in nature as well. And again, I could discuss this for hours, but I'm trying to keep this video short. Um, that said, I feel compelled to say that the more I grow in the truth of Jesus Christ, the more I am astounded that so many so-called Christian churches worship on the wrong day. Again, it's the seventh day that's the Sabbath, and none other. Friday at sundown to Saturday at sundown to be exact. Please research same 
if you're in a so-called Christian church that does otherwise, please leave same and find another one that adheres to the word, as Jesus Christ himself said, and I quote, Matthew 5.17, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets, and do not I, I do not come to abolish them, but to fulfill. For truly I say unto you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or stroke shall pass from the law until all is accomplished. Now, um, no doubt, you know, some will say, but we're now under grace. You hear that all the time. We're under grace. We're under grace. Uh, and not the law. But I respond with, same as twisting the scripture. For just as adultery was and remains forbidden, so does breaking the Sabbath. Hence, violating either commandment is sin. So in closing, I'd like to share a couple of final scriptures that I'm being led to warn you of the same. Uh, 2 Timothy 4, 3 and 4, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall turn into fables. And also 2 Corinthians 6, 14, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? So with that, I'd just like to say thank you for watching. May God really richly bless you all, and your, you and yours. And again, I'm sorry for the voice, guys. It's, it's just, you know, it's just one of those things. I apologize. So you guys take care. Much love to all of you. Okay? Thanks, man.